Hello YouTube! By the way, Merry Christmas. Yes, it is Christmas Day and we decided to do a video because I wanted to do this. I don't know if you've seen it, but I used I, this is my ring that I wear and this is Ellie's ring and we decided that we wanted to make some new rings. I mean, you saw the rings I made for my niece and her husband when they got married and Ellie really loved the channel ring with the, or the inlay ring with the opals in it so we saved up our money and we got some cores and yes this is my bit for my big fat finger and this is for her little baby tiny finger and she likes amber i like blue so i got her some amber crushed opal and this is multi fire crushed opal and we're going to mix them together for her ring and then blue is my favorite color so i found some van gogh blue that i really like and that'll be for mine so I'm going to do her ring first, of course, ladies first, and we're going to get started on that. And these are my ring mandrels. They fit into my Nova Chuck. And actually, I need to put on the smaller ones for her tiny finger. And that just comes out like that. I slide this in, and I put mine all the way seated up to here. Now, you don't have to use a Nova Chuck. Some people have a collet that is a little bit smaller. In diameter here and it tightens around round things I don't have one of those so I'm using this and I need to be really really careful because when this is spinning when that's spinning I have to keep my fingers away from that otherwise it's you know these these right here are gonna catch on my knuckles and yeah that's not gonna feel very good so we're gonna I need some light and some glasses and I'm going to slide this up until it gets kind of snug. There we go. Let's spin it nice and low. All right. There we go. So I have that in. I can get my core out of the way. And I'm using UV resin, UV light. And basically I'll go around. If you saw the ring, the video I made where I made my niece's rings, I'll put a little bit of epoxy in there. I'll drop some of the opal in and then I keep going harden it up and then I keep going around until it's completely filled and then I layer the top with resin and we go from there I'll put a little bit of resin right here I don't use a lot at a time it only cures with a UV light but you know there's no point in wasting it so get a little bit inside the channel This is actually perfect. Thank you. So see, now I can just dump it on there and it'll catch. So even though it's using a lathe, what other kind of what kind of similarities or differences are there for turning and ring making for you? Well, the difference is setting all the opals. That's obvious. Um, similarities. It's it's pretty similar because once this is completely dry, I'll turn it on and I'll use my square chisel to flatten it out all the way around, and then I'll check for any holes and uh, fill those back in and then once that's done we basically polish once i'm done with this one setting everything in i'm going to take this one and set it out in the sun while i do mine Sweet. so it'll have good 20 30 minutes to harden the sun according to this it only needs five to ten minutes on a sunny day which in florida we have a Super sunny day today. Super sunny day. We have On Christmas. Supply of sunny days. I mean, we're we're in shorts and it's Christmas day. Right. <laughs> all right. So, all my holes are pretty much filled. So I'm going to get this off the lathe, or off my mandrel, and that's a very simple task. Usually, hopefully, I didn't get too much resin on the mandrel itself. I'll just loosen it once up. Well, you set it on there and go put it out in the sun while you oh. do that. 
Okay. There's that. And, oh, look, it's I didn't get any residual. So there we go. And this is what it looks like right now. All rough and gougy and just looks like something you would never want to wear. Now, but we're not done yet. All right. Now for my ring, since I have such a big fat finger, I need to change this ring mandrel. All right, so I got this changed over. I got my ring on there with a big fat finger. Van Gogh, got that cleaned out. All right, so that one's good for the first layer. We'll set this one out in the sun and I will turn Ellie's ring and see what kind of divots we have. Take my time, nice and slow. Not even close yet. Just wanna make sure, cause I don't wanna cut the ring. I don't wanna cut the core. We got that and now we still have some more areas that need some opal so what I'm gonna do is crush up some of that opal all right so I took this I took the crushed opal and I put it in here and I used my smooth faced hammer and I crushed it even more So I had to add some more epoxy, fill in the holes, letting that dry. Well, I'm drying it with my UV light. And then I'm gonna set this one out in the sun, let it dry for a little while and get back to Ellie's ring and get it polished up because hers was almost done. And let's give it off. All right, I'm going to use some sandpaper on this one. Now we take a toothpick and we go around and we try to feel for holes. This is an important part because this is what gives it the nice smooth finish. You don't want to have any divots in the finish when you're done. Well, let's go set this out in the sun for a little bit and then I'll go back to working on my ring. All right, so let's get this off. Let's get back on her ring. Just the way it works. Go back and forth, back and forth. I am going to polish at about 1700, just because that's what I want to do. Oh man, look at all that space where I missed. Yeah, I'm going to have to redo it. So I want to show you what I saw. All right, so you see right here, get a toothpick. You see how uh, you have all crystal right there. Well, then we have to start getting spaces right there, here, here, and here. 
in here the crystals are so big the opals are so big and then this channel is only two millimeters it's very small so what I'm gonna have to do is let this sit I'm gonna have to let this sit in acetone overnight and it'll eat all the epoxy out and then I can clean it off and tomorrow what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of epoxy in and I'll place the crystals one by one instead of dumping them in there and then that way it'll go in it'll just take a little bit longer and let it do or maybe I can work on it tonight a little bit um, if if all the epoxy comes out and get all that out of there and then let it sit overnight and then first thing in the morning set it out in the sun and see what happens so I filled on all the holes again and now I'm just gonna go through and Give another minute on each spot with the UV flashlight since I ran out of sunlight. We'll see if I can sand it. A lot of sunlight and the UV light only does so much, so I'm going to let them sit and zap it in the morning with some good UV light. Let's go check on Ellie's ring. Right, so we got a little bit of an angle difference here today, a little different angle at mom and dad's some family stuff going on so I came here and I'll finish up the ring I filled in all the holes and now we're gonna do our wet sanding So now I need to redo Elizabeth's ring, and this is what I get to look at now, because Dad has a magnifying glass, and you know, Dad's always have the cool stuff. So we're gonna set up here, and I get to. We just had longer to shop. Longer to shop. <laughs> so that's all dried, ready to go. So now I'm gonna turn it. Hopefully this one will turn out better. So I put another coat of the UV resin on there. And that's what it looks like now. Alright, so here's where we are. Getting ready to sand it. And get it all polished up. Shiny. All right, it's number times for the ring. These were fun. I enjoyed making these, and I hope I really, really, I really hope I get to make more. For tools and supplies on my ring, we're looking at about twenty-five dollars. For time and material, about fifteen dollars. So a total of forty dollars. I would probably sell this ring for. I mean, I'm new to this. I would say sixty dollars. I don't know what the going rates are for these. I would say sixty. That gives me a profit of 20. For Ellie's ring, it's a little bit different. Tools and supplies are the same at, at uh, $25. But time and material, this one took a little extra time. I was using two different color stones, and I had to place each one separately as I went all the way around. Mine, I could just kind of put the epoxy on there and dump it on there. You saw the video. So this one took a little extra time, and I would do time and material at about $25. That's a total of 50 bucks. So that puts her ring at... $70 and isn't that always the case women's stuff is more expensive than men's so 60 for hers or for mine 70 for hers that's $130 I would sell it if I did it as a set I'd probably sell them maybe 115 or 120 as a set 
again, I had a lot of fun making these. And any of you out there that turn rings, if you have ideas, if you have suggestions, please put them in the comments and let us know. I want to learn and I want to get better at this. I enjoy doing it. Ellie loves her ring. I love my ring. When you take them out in the sun, we're going to do a little show on that. I'm going to show you at the end. Take them out in the sun, they just shine. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.